guys, it's Chloe, and today I am here with a brand new video, and a very exciting video, I think. Today I am here with my July wrap-up, and the reason I find this so exciting is because I finished a total of 17 books in the month of July. What? I finished 17 books, and guys, I'm so proud of myself. I have decided now for my wrap-up videos, I'm going to include more stats about my reading for the month than I already do. I know for each book I talk about my rating, my any letters for the A to Z book challenge I went to, as well as any challenges it may have gone to. Well, I kind of wanted to elaborate and I'm, it's still a work in progress, so I'm just going to go with what I have so far. It may change throughout the rest of the year, who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm gonna try and not make this video too long, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I read 17 books in the month of July. Of those 17 books, two of them counted for letters for the HC book challenge, which I'm surprised it was only two out of the 17. And then also out of those 17, four of them counted for challenges on the Pop Sugar challenge. And again, only four out of 17 books. I participated in one readathon this month and that was Booktubeathon, but I will get more into that later when I'm talking about the books. And as far as some miscellaneous stuff for this month, I read a good amount of traditional books as well as indie books, a good mix of them. There was a surprising amount of retellings in this month as well, and six of the books I read were audiobooks. So the first book I completed in July was By Your Side by Casey West, and this is an ARC copy of it. And this was her spring release, it came out a couple of months ago, and I have been trying to catch up on her work lately, and this was the last one I needed before Lucky in Love came out. I really enjoyed this book. I love Casey West's contemporary writing, and this was no different. This one was really cute. It did take a different turn than I thought it would, but I still enjoyed it. I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It did not count for a letter for the HC challenge, and for the Pop Sugar challenge it counted as a book written by someone you admire. The next book I read was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco, and this was a weird one because I really wasn't going to pick this up, but I'm actually picking up in preparation for the Young Adult Booktube Awards this year because I am a judge in the retellings category and there's a chance that the sequel, Hunting Prince Dracula, is going to be voted for in the retellings category. So I was picking up the first book in preparation of that and this book was kind of just okay for me. I did listen to the audiobook. I ended up giving this one a two and a half stars. It was kind of just okay. I'm not a big historical fan, and this was this was kind of like a historical fiction type of book. Also listed as a mystery, and I'm not a big mystery fan, but this one was just okay. It did not count for a letter for the HC challenge, and it did not count for any of the Pop Sugar challenges. The next book I picked up was a reread, and it was 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. I read this book a couple of years ago, and I was rereading it because I haven't started the TV show yet. I was waiting to reread the book, but I was also waiting for the audiobook to come in at the library, so I did listen to the audiobook version of this. I enjoyed it just like I did last time I read it. I gave it five stars. It did not count for a letter for the A to Z challenge, and for the Pop Trigger challenge it counted as a story within a story. The next book I picked up was Queen of Hearts by Colleen Oaks, and this is an Alice in Wonderland retelling, and I freaking love Alice in Wonderland, so I was really looking forward to picking this up, and I've been meaning to pick it up for a while. I really enjoyed this book. Um, my library, for some reason, lists it as a mystery, which I had no idea why, considering it's a retelling. Um, and there's only a little, little bit of mystery in it, so it's not really a full-blown mystery, it's a fantasy and a retelling. I ended up listening to the audiobook for this. I actually started it with my friend Kathleen from For the Love of Books on our way to Orlando one day, and then I ended up finishing it on my own. I gave it four stars. It did not count for a letter for the HC challenge, and it did not count for any of the Pop Sugar challenges. The next book I read was The Vampires Next Door by L. Class, and I'm not going to talk too much about this book because I did do a spoiler free book review that I will link in the description below. This is a fancy paranormal supernatural book that I received for a promotion and I ended up really enjoying this book. If you're a fan of Buffy you will enjoy this book, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and if you're thinking it's like Twilight it's not. Um, it's a very, it puts a lot of emphasis on the supernatural aspect and the paranormal. So I would definitely pick this up if you're interested in any of that. I gave it four stars. It counted as a letter V for the A to Z book challenge. It did not count for the Pop Sugar challenge. The next book I picked up was 
Wolf Tales with a Twist by Renee Folsom. This is a bind up of her three books in the Twisted Wolf Tales series. This is a new adult retelling. The three retellings that are in here are Little Red Riding Hood, Beauty and the Beast, and Snow White. I absolutely loved this book. I picked this up back at Indie Book Fest way back in October. Really super pumped about it. Finally got the chance to pick it up and I fell in love guys. It was so amazing. I cannot recommend this enough. It's so good and I just I need more from this series. I think she said she's releasing another one soon and I'm really really hoping so and I'm hoping she'll have it at IBF this year because I'm definitely going to be picking it up. I gave this book four and a half stars. It did not count for a letter for the HZ challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge but guys go pick this up. Like new adult retellings it's awesome. It's really good. The next book I picked up was Taunt by Julie Valenti and this is actually also part of the Twisted Wolf Tales series by Renee Folsom just written by an author friend of hers. This one is also new adult but it doesn't have any erotica in it like the um, ones by Renee Folsom does. This one was also pretty good too. I really enjoyed it. This one is a Wizard of Oz retelling and I've never read a Wizard of Oz retelling so I was really really pumped to read this. I read it immediately after finishing the books by Renee Folsom and it was it was so great. I gave this one five stars. It did not count for a letter for the A to Z challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge. The next book I picked up was Rough and Tumble by Kristen Hope Mazzola and if you saw my wrap up last month in June I read Stupid Hearts by Kristen Hope Mazzola and absolutely fell in love with it. It was so good and the same thing happened with this. I picked this up at For the Love of Books in Florida a couple weeks ago and I read it maybe a couple of days after getting back from the trip and freaking it was so good. It was so amazing. I have fallen in love with her writing. She's honestly probably gonna start being an auto buy author for me because her work is so good. Now it's not YA and I'm not even sure it would be considered NA but it, it does have a, a little bit of erotica in it and it, but it's also like contemporary and romance at the same time and it's it's so good. This one is really quick to get through. It's only about 70 pages. 70 pages. The font is big and it was it was fantastic. I gave this book five stars. It did not count for a letter for the A to Z challenge and for the pop sugar challenge it counted as a book from a genre slash sub genre that you have never heard of before and the sub genre for this is sports romance um which I've heard of before but like I haven't heard of a lot of it before but she does write a good amount of sports romance and this was just it was great it was really good the next book I picked up was Spindle Fire by Lexa Hillier and this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling that actually ended up being pretty good I don't think I've read a Sleeping Beauty retelling before this one and I ended up really enjoying it I didn't know too much about it going into it and ended up enjoying it and I am gonna pick up the sequel when it comes out next year I ended up giving this a three and a half stars it did not count for a letter for the A to Z challenge and for the pop sugar challenge it counted as a book by or about a person with a disability and one of our main characters Isabel is blind. The next book I read was Words in Deep Blue by Kath Crowley. I listened to the audiobook for this one. I kind of went into this book blind. I only knew a little bit of what it was about so I wasn't 100% sure. It kind of just ended up being just okay for me. I enjoyed pits and pieces of it but overall it was just okay. One thing I didn't know about this book is it's set in Australia and I was not expecting that until I started listening to the audiobook and the narrators had Australian accents. I thought that was an interesting aspect of the book. I ended up giving this two and a half stars. It did not count for a letter of the A to Z challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge. And now we're to the part of the wrap up where all the rest of the books that I read were part of Booktubeathon and I had a pretty freaking successful Booktubeathon this year. I finished all the challenges, I read seven books, I was on top of my ish. And if you're interested in seeing my vlog that I did for that week it went up the other day on Wednesday so I will link that in the description below. So the first book of Booktubeathon that I read was Gloria and the Unicorn by Wanda Luthman. This is actually a kids book and I got it in exchange for an honest review which that review video is going to be going up on Wednesday if you're interested in watching that and I will link it in the description when it goes live. This was a really cute book. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because I will have the non-spoiler review going up on Wednesday but it was cute. It was about accepting yourself for who you are 
and it was just adorable and I love unicorns so it was great. I gave it five stars. It did not count for a letter for the HC challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge but it was super cute. The next book I read for Booktubeathon was Ronit and Jamil by Pamela L. Laskin. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling where one of our characters is Israeli and the other one is Palestinian and they fall in love. And this book is actually told in verse which I did not know before picking it up um, but, but it made it really easy to get through. Again this was another book that was kind of just okay for me. A lot of it was going back and forth between the two characters which was a little hard for me to keep up on um, but again it was just okay. There were some parts that I enjoyed and that's basically it. I gave it two stars. It did not count for a letter for the HC challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge. The third book I read for Booktubeathon and we are back at it with the Kristen Hope Mazzola. I read Crashing the Wedding again by Kristen Hope Mazzola, one of my new favorite indie authors. This is a prequel to her Crashing series but this actually leads into the first book so I ended up reading this one first. Again like the other two books that I've read by her it is cute, it has a little bit of erotica in it, and it is funny and I really enjoyed it and I really love her writing now and I love being able to see her at events and tell her how much I love her books and I can't wait to see her at whichever event I see her at next so I can get more of her books. I ended up giving this five stars of course. It did not count for a letter for the HZ challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge but I cannot recommend her work enough. The next book I read for Booktubeathon was 101 Things That Pissed Me Off by Rachel Ballinger. This is a YouTuber book and if you're familiar uh, familiar with the Ballingers, Rachel is the sister of Colleen Ballinger who plays Miranda Sings. I ended up enjoying this book. It was a funny YouTuber book, really short and easy to get through, and I now add it to my small little collection of YouTuber books. The only thing that irritated me about this book is there's no page numbers. Like what kind of book doesn't have page numbers and I kind of did like a small little rant on Twitter about the lack of page numbers um, in two books that I read so it was a little frustrating. Anyway lacking of page numbers aside I gave this book five stars. It did not count for a letter for the A to Z challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge. The next book for Booktubeathon that I read was Ink by Melanie Karsak. This is a mermaid book that I was super pumped about. I just really wanted to read a mermaid book. It's short, easy to get through. The only thing I don't like is it has really really tiny font but you push past that and it was really good. <laughs> ended up giving it four stars. It did not count for a letter for the HC challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge. The next book I read for Booktubeathon was really really like funny and hilarious and that is fucking awkward anthology. This is 23 short stories about awkward sex written by 24 authors. Really really good. I've been wanting to pick this up since I bought it in Jacksonville back in like April and it was so funny and so easy to get through and it's just it's awkward sex and it's really funny and dumb and hilarious and I cannot wait to pick up I found out in Sarah no I found it in Orlando that there's um an, a holiday edition so I cannot wait to pick up that book and read it um this was it was dumb and funny and I I highly recommend it if you're looking for something to just make you laugh I gave this five stars it counted as the letter f for the HZ challenge and it did not count for a letter for the pop sugar challenge. And finally the last book I read for Booktubeathon and the last book that I read in July, the 17th book, was Geekarella by Ashley Poston. I read the audiobook for this, well I listened to the audiobook and this was the final book for Booktubeathon and it was like 320 pages so I was partially worried about it going into Booktubeathon but this was really good. I actually finished this right before filming this video because I am filming this video early. I really liked the aspect of like the Cinderella retelling as well as like the nerdy geek stuff coming in um, and it was like the nerdy geek part was it was kind of like Star Trek. Um, I don't remember what it was called. But it was basically like Star Trek and Cinderella combined and you have Geekarella and it was so cute. I ended up giving it a four and a half stars. Did not count for a letter for the HC challenge and it did not count for the pop sugar challenge. So guys those are all of the books that I finished in the month of July. This is the best reading month I've had so far this year. The second best was like January I think when I read 12 books but I read 17 books this month and my goal with Booktubeathon was to get ahead on my reading challenge and now I'm like eight books ahead on my Goodreads challenge. Um, so I am like I'm so confident 
in the rest of this year and getting that challenge done and getting everything done just because of this awesome reading month that I had. Half the books I read were indie and the other half were traditionally published. I read a lot of library books this month as well as a ton of books that have been on my shelves. I am so proud of myself. So guys that's all I have for this video today before it gets way too long. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Down below in the comments, let me know what kind of reading month you had, how many books you read, if you've read any of the books that I read this month. If you like behind the scenes look at my life, you can check out my vlog channel, Cloessence. And if you like what you see here, please go ahead and click subscribe. I post new videos every Wednesday and Saturday, so click subscribe so you can be updated for when I post those. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!